Today, federal investigators will examine the wreck of a Continental Airlines jet that crashed on takeoff over the weekend. Rick Salinger of our Denver station, KCNC, has the latest. Good morning, Rick. Good morning, Harry. While they've treated the injured, they've transported the rest of the passengers. Now the task at hand is to try to determine what caused this accident. NTSB investigators will interview the Continental flight crew and passengers, examine the windy weather, and follow the very visible skid marks. They are seeking clues as to why Flight 1404 came to a jolting and fiery end Saturday night en route from Denver to Houston. We are here for one and only reason, that is to find out what happened so that we can keep it from happening again. During the takeoff, the plane veered off the runway, skidding to a rest in a 40-foot deep ravine. Everything was fine for a while, and then suddenly we all felt the plane kind of turn to the left. It was almost like taking an off-ramp on a freeway, and you're like, wow, I didn't know a plane could do that. The resulting fire scorched most of the right side of the Boeing 737-500, and an engine was disconnected from its wing. The fuselage cracked, and the interior burned. The gentleman who was on the window said to me, ma'am, we've got to get out of here. And I looked at him and saw flames out the window right by him. A passenger took this photo of the flames. I just expected to see uh, some kind of carnage in every other seat. I just didn't have any idea what I was going to be seeing. And it was, I can't say joyful, but it was just wonderful to see there was nothing. There was nobody hurt. Among the factors that they'll be looking at, the weather, possible mechanical problems, or human error. But right now, it's too early to say what caused this crash, Harry. Rick Salinger, thanks so much. Joining us now is Peter Goles, former managing director of the NTSB and an airline industry expert. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Harry. Anything that comes to mind as you look at the very sketchy bit, bits of information that makes you sort of at least want to draw a conclusion about what this was about? Well, it is pretty early, and the real question is, at some point, the pilots made a decision to abort their takeoff, and there's plenty of length on that runway. Mm -hmm. It's 12,000 feet long. Why did they get into that ravine? Uh, it could be uneven engine power, complicated by a, a crosswind that was tricky, but, but not unusual. Right. Uh, the good news is the flight data recorder and the cockpit <coughs> voice recorder will tell the story. 31 miles an hour winds. There were no other flight delays because of the winds on, on Saturday. That shouldn't, that shouldn't have been that much of a problem, should it? No, it should not have. Uh, you know, Denver's uh, an airport that the pilots are used to these kinds of winds, mm -hmm. uh, well within the, uh, the takeoff limits of the, uh, of the aircraft uh, f for that day. Yeah. There's some speculation, Wall Street Journal online this morning, there might have been some sort of a braking problem. How would that have come into play? Well, the pilots make a decision to abort their takeoff. They back the engines down and stand on the brakes. Mm -hmm. If the brakes were applied for some reason unevenly, you know, if, if there was some malfunction, uh, that could have veered the plane off, or it could have been uneven uh, engine power. Yeah. When they backed the engines down, one engine kept going. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the, and the fact is, though, it sounds like at least from one, uh, th this is a lot of hearsay this morning, they might have been up to 100 knots or so. What's takeoff uh, uh, miles per hour for a plane like this? Well, the what, what they call V1 is probably 130, 140 uh, knots. Uh, usually they, it tries to get off the ground at about 45, 5,000 feet down the runway. Mm. As I say, there's plenty of room, mm. uh, but pilots are... Pilots train for aborted takeoffs, you know, throughout their career. Right. And, and this plane could take off with, with one engine without any problems. Mm. Peter Golds, lots to find out about this. Thank you so much. Do appreciate it, sir.